Hey, good morning. Good to be with you. It's a Tuesday breakfast with Jesus. Hope you're doing well. Hope this is uh, going to be a good day for you as you get out and about doing whatever he has planned and you have planned. How about that? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's good to be here as we launch into another summer day. Uh, I, I like the summertime. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's always a sad state of affairs when we see um, those days getting shorter and uh, days are getting cooler. And I know some of y'all love the fall. And the fall's a good, yeah, I don't mind that either. But uh, the older I get, the less I appreciate winter. <laughs> That's just the way it is. So good morning to this breakfast club. Appreciate you guys jumping right in here. Gail and Andrew, uh, good to see you. Jane and, and uh, Donna. Uh, let's see, Jack, Ada, Susan, and there's Elaine. Good morning. Thank you guys. I appreciate so much to be able to hang out with you and share a little bit this morning. So we're moving into Matthew chapter 16. And, um, you know, just again, trying to roughly follow some chronological time frame here for the life of Christ. And so here we see him dealing yet once again with those wonderful folks called Pharisees and Sadducees. So Matthew 16 says that the Pharisees and the Sadducees came up and testing him, asked him to show them a sign from heaven. But he answered and said to them, let me make sure I get this here. My Bible's a little bit folded. Okay. <laughs> when it is evening, you say, it'll be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, there will be a storm today, for the sky is red and threatening. Do you know how to discern the appearance of the sky, but cannot discern the signs of the times? An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and a sign will not be given it, except the sign of Jonah. And he left them and went away. So as we've mentioned in the past, you know, the Pharisees um, and the Sadducees were the, the ruling religious elite of their day. They basically had taken over the, uh, the control or the controls, even surpassing uh, that of the high priest and, and the Levites and all of that, you know, they were really the ones that were in charge. And so they, you know, they saw Jesus as a huge threat to their power, to their authority, and were looking for every opportunity to discredit him, to basically, you know, take him out of the way. So these, these little tests that they would uh, put before him were designed in their mind to try to expose him as someone who is illegitimate, an imposter, not really from God and all, and all of that, right? So this is insistence that they had for seeing a sign. In other words, they would you know, say to Jesus, well, do a sign and we'll believe you, okay? <laughs> But the problem was, of course, is that the sign that they were requiring was something that would line up with what happened in the Old Testament. You know, make some manna, part the, the Sea of Galilee. You know, they wanted to see a sign that was you know, consistent with the kinds of signs that occurred in the nation of Israel back in the day through Moses, through others, you know. Um, you know, we'll, we'll throw an axe head in the water and you make it float. You know, that's what they were looking for. That's number one. Number two, the problem here was that they were commanding that a sign be given. And, you know, really? I mean, just think about the arrogance of that idea that, you know, here, here you are, these, you know, pitiful little people who, who, you know, think that you, you have everything under your control and you're trying to command God to, <laughs> to do a sign. I mean, it was just absurd. But this is, this is what Jesus had to deal with 
when it comes to uh, these people. But that, you know, that was, if that was all it was, you know, if it was just simply, okay, so when Jesus was here, he had these nutty people called Pharisees and Sadducees, and, and you know, thank God we don't have them anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> would that it were so, right? Would that it were so that there were no modern day Pharisees and Sadducees. But Jesus recognized, uh, you know, totally that what he was dealing with in this group of people was something that uh, was not ever going to go away. This is something that is, is common to every uh, people group, every age. You know, there are always these kind of people that may not be called Pharisees and Sadducees, but they are in existence and stay in existence throughout human history. So he goes on to talk to his disciples. And, um, you know, the, the disciples come to him. This is verse 5. It says that they, um, <clears throat> uh, the, they had forgotten to take bread, right? It says that they came to the other side and had forgotten to take bread. And Jesus said to them, again, using this life example, <laughs> you know, say, oh, is it an opportunity for me to teach him something? So he says to them, watch out and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And so the disciples began to discuss among themselves, saying, it is because we brought no bread. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know we shouldn't laugh at these guys. They, they were doing the best they can, but sometimes they would say the most stupid things. <laughs> You know, not that we've never done that, right? No, we've never said anything as stupid as that. But yes, sometimes I have a hard time not laughing. It's because we took no bread. What? But Jesus, aware of this, said, You men of little faith, why do you discuss among yourselves because you have no bread? Do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many large baskets you took up or the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many baskets you took up i mean again he's making it clear that there's never going to be an issue of lacking your needs all right you forgot the bread oh well you really think that God's not going to take care of you. That's basically what he's saying. I mean, you can kind of feel and hear the exasperation, you know, in his words that he's speaking to them, right? How is it that you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread? But beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not say to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So, <laughs> they finally got it, and we need to get it as well, okay? And so, as I was thinking about what I wanted to share with you today concerning the, the what I'm calling the poison yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees, because it really is, it's poison, I'm thinking to myself, well, what's the best way I could share this with you? <laughs> with you, Because it's quite a lot. And then all of a sudden, I remembered that my good friend Gary Fishman wrote a book a number of years ago called The Distorted Images of God's Heart. Now, I have the older version of it. He's since reissued this with a nicer cover. <laughs> but it's called The Distorted Images of God's Heart. Phariseeism in the modern day church. <gasps> really? We have Pharisees today? Yes, we do. So I'm going to just share a few thoughts that, you know, from his book. And if you're interested, you can absolutely go get that on Amazon.com. There's a short link that I created, bit.ly slash distort image. And that'll take you right to the page where you can pick this up for yourself. It is excellent so the the yeast of the pharisees they were you know what they taught for most you know in most cases what they taught 
did not come from the Torah. It did not come from the prophets or the, the other, you know, books of the, the Old Covenant. The Pharisees taught based on the Talmud and other writings of their ancestors, the fathers, the teachings of the fathers, okay? And what that was basically is, you know, kind of like you go to a, a Bible store and you pick up one of those commentaries, you know, there's a few famous ones out there, Matthew Henry and some of the others, you know, and, and these are guys that, you know, they dedicated their lives to studying the Bible and and interpreting it and trying to explain it. And so some of them came out with these big, you know, commentaries on the Bible. And they can be helpful, but we've got to remember there, it's really still in all just one person's opinion about, you know, what the Bible is trying to say. But the Pharisees, they, that's what they did. And the problem, of course, was that they elevated these human ramblings about what the Bible means and how it should be interpreted, they elevated that above the scriptures themselves. Jesus made that point on several occasions, that you follow the traditions of men more than you follow the word of God itself. I We, we talked about one just the other day when they would say, well, you know what, if you, if you want to dedicate all your stuff to God, then you don't have to take care of your parents. You don't have to obey the commandment of God to honor your father and your mother. Nah, it's okay. Just dedicate all your stuff to God. And oh, by the way, you can undedicate it after they're gone. I mean, what? I mean, but that's the kind of stuff they would do. You know, they would get picky on, did you tithe everything down to, you know, your herbs? I mean, how absurd. So that's a major, major focus of Phariseeism is just this thing of, of, uh, what are, we, what, what are the traditions that we have put in place in our denomination or in our church, you know, that you can't violate that because, oh, that would be horrible. You know what? We've always done it that way. You know, the carpet in the sanctuary has always been this color. How dare you suggest we change it? <laughs> you know, or whatever. I mean, there's so many things that that religion wants to elevate and make important. Why? Because it then becomes a substitute. It then becomes a counterfeit thing that people focus on instead of what's most important, which is what? Knowing God. No, having that relationship with Him. And that is another um, aspect of Pharisaism is that they worship the rituals they would would rather engage in ritual where they've got everything written down, right? It's all nicely done and polished and and this is what we do you know that's more important than actually hearing from God and relating to him heart to heart okay and you know many of us have been raised in religious environments where that's really all it was I was raised in the Lutheran Church and every Sunday it was pretty much the same thing over and over again there there might be a moment it's somewhere in the mix where where you would sense God's presence or or feel like there was something there I, it was you know for me there wasn't I mean it was like just dry dead ritual but that is what is prized by Pharisees and that's what's taught is it well this is what was handed down <clears throat> this is what we're going to do right Whew. none of that is in the heart of, of the father you know most of what is done in in modern day church services is absolutely not found in scripture and it's absolutely not something that is required in order to have an encounter with God himself <laughs> It's just, I'm sorry, that's, that's what it is. Um, another aspect of, of uh, the Pharisees has to do with their willingness to be hypocrites in their public persona, right? They would present themselves as always looking their best and, and you know, with whatever their uh, finery was, um, you know, they would dress up, they would pray their prayers out loud in the marketplace and just want everybody to see how holy and righteous that they are, while in truth, you know, Jesus called them whitewashed tombs. 
meaning what was inside was full of sin and corruption and perversion. But that's what it, you know, this is what they teach. Pharisees will teach you that how you look is more important than anything else. That you've got to always look like, you know, in our case, it would be looking like a Christian, like a good Christian. <laughs> and so they'll set the standard for what that is. Give you a long list of things that you should or shouldn't wear or how you should or shouldn't look, right? That's not, that's nothing to do with a relationship you know, a heart-to-heart -heart relationship with the Lord who accepts every single person as they are. Not that we can't make improvements and, <laughs> you know, but we don't do it for the purpose of pleasing people, which was another huge characteristic of the, the Pharisees. These people, you know, if they felt that they were, were in any way going to be threatened as to their power and authority, which is what Jesus was doing, right? Well, they went to war, and they did. They went to war with Jesus. And I don't know if you've ever been in situations like that where you innocently start sharing things that God showed you or suggesting things that the Lord, you know, puts on your heart to do, and, and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, wait a minute, who are you, you know? People that are, that are like Pharisees will shut you down in a heartbeat because you are now trying to draw attention to yourself. Well, how dare you? I'm the leader. I'm the one in charge. I'm the one who makes the, uh, you know, who gives the ideas and the suggestions. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but those are kinds of things that well, maybe I'm not. <laughs> I'm just thinking maybe there's some of you that have experienced that level, you know, of 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 uh, Pharisaism in your. And, and I'm sorry if you have. You know, I it's like I, so many times when I'm talking about this, I just want to kind of go. I'm sorry, on behalf of. All leaders, I, I ask you to forgive us <laughs> because some, yeah, some of these things are just so, so bad. But they, they wanted to, 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 you know, maintain their position. You know, Pharisees were all about position. You know, Jesus called it sitting in the seat of Moses when he spoke out against their, uh, you know, their um, proclivity to make these pronouncements right, to sit there and go, this is what you are to do, you know, and it was strictly done out of their own place of position and authority. It wasn't anything that God was saying in, this, in, in the word, you know, and of course they didn't have uh, prophets the way we do today in terms of prophecy, but again, the idea that any one person thinks that they sit or stand in a place where they can dictate to anybody in the family of God, Boy, you, you, you hear or see that, run, do not walk to the nearest exit because you do not want to be involved with people who think they have the right to tell you how to live your life. We are all going to stand before God as individuals and have to account for what we did or didn't do as his children. Now, we're not going to be punished, and, you know, to be sent to hell and tormented and all of that, but... There's a reward coming, guys. There's a reward. And that reward is based on how I obeyed what he showed me to do. And if if I stand before God and say, well, you know, I, I, I wanted to do it, but, you know, my pastor wouldn't let me. You know, God's going to go, well, so your pastor became God, right? That's the issue. God is God. You know, now I'm not saying that we don't get... You know, we shouldn't go get counsel or, or have people that we trust giving input into our lives so that, you know, if we get some crazy idea that we think is God and go try to go off and do it, you know, you can have somebody say, uh, you know, it's probably not God. <laughs> okay. But ultimately, we are responsible for our own, our own decisions and our own lives. You cannot stand before God and blame anybody. So when someone tries to do that, tries to dictate to you, tries to tell you how to live your life, they're way out of bounds. But that's what the Pharisees did. You know, Jesus t talked about how they would would uh, tie up burdens and place them on people's shoulders and then not even lift a finger to help them. What is that? Well, that's telling people 
to do all these things, to jump through all these hoops in order to be considered righteous and holy and worthy, you know, and all of that. That's what religion does. Religion puts all of the effort, all of the responsibility on you and me. If we don't do all these things, well, God is not going to be pleased. He's not going to answer our prayer. He's not going to love us, you know, and bless us and all that sort of thing. And that's what the Pharisees excelled at is is telling people how jacked up they are and how God is not pleased with them and he's not going to do anything for them, not going to bless them and whatnot. And in order to overcome that, well, here's what you need to do. And they, you know, it's like they would unroll a toilet paper of, of uh, uh, you know, a list of, of do's and don'ts and all those sorts of things, okay? And that's what, that's what these type of people want to do. They want to regulate your life to the last inch. And guys, we have this happening in, in so-called secular realms where people who, who are in power in government want to dictate to your life and regulate your life down to the, the, the last inch. You know, and, and they are, quite frankly, modern day Pharisees. The whole politically correct movement that wants to dictate what you think and what you say. And if you don't say what they think is correct, well, you know, you're going to be vilified and cast out and whatever else you see. So Pharisaism is not just in the church. It is, you know, in any kind of a situation where people want that kind of control, they want that kind of power and authority, they're going to operate in this kind of a way. Um, they, they, uh, let me see what else here. I'm, again, I've just, if you tuned in late, I'm using my good friend Gary Fishman's book. Uh, it's called Distorted Images of God's Heart. Pharisaism in the Modern Day Church. It's an excellent little book. He just republished it a couple of years ago. Um, so I've got actually the older version. Uh, the, the new one has a really nice new cover on it. But you can get this if you want to really dive into this. It's available on Amazon. And I made a short link there for you. bit.ly slash distort image. And, um, you know, I would highly recommend that you go forth and, and, and pick this up for yourself, especially if you have, you know, been in the so-called traditional church for any length of time. You know, we were talking about this last night on our uh, Strategic Insights program, how easily we are influenced by this religious thing. It just kind of seeps into your mindset and you, you kind of go through life until the Lord hallelujah, <laughs> until he shines his light and reveals to you just how much you are seeing yourself and him in this light where you, you're constantly concerned about, geez, am I screwing up? Is he, is he not happy with me? You know, man, that is no way to live. It's horrible. And he's totally set us free from that through the blood of Christ and putting a, making us one with Jesus. For him to be dissatisfied and angry with me, he'd have to be angry with Jesus because we are that one. There's no separation now between me and Christ and between you and Christ. If you have received him, if you've opened your life to him, you are one with Jesus. The Father sees you in Christ and Christ in you. There's no difference to him. We are, we have all the characteristics and capabilities of Christ in us right? Yes, we'll never be divine, thank you God, <laughs> but we will be sons and daughters of the divine. How about that? Let me see, I think I've got most of these covered today. Um, the final one I would say is this idea that uh, they always want the, the comfortable, and, and there's a comfort zone, where when Jesus talked about new wine, well, the Pharisees said, no, we want the old. All right. And so there is this idea where, uh, no, we're not going to move with what God wants to do here and now. We've already established that, you know, and we would prefer and will prefer. We will stay where we know what we're doing. See, that's a big, big thing. When, when you feel like you are in control, well, God is not. He's not calling the shots where I think I'm 
I am calling the shots. And that's a lot of what they would do as well. And that happens today, you know, too. There's a lot of people that want to stay with the tried and true, the, the comfort zones uh, that have been established instead of stepping out, taking risk, right? R-I-S-K is another way we spell faith <laughs> and, and really allowing for something uh, unique and new that the Lord wants to do. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Jesus was so clear on, um, you know, alerting his disciples and by extension you and I as to this poison yeast, the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, right? We've got to know that this is important. We don't, I don't want to be poisoned by that anymore. And I trust you don't as well. So take some time to really dig into this and allow the Holy Spirit to show you. Just say, look, please shine your light. Okay, show me where I am still being influenced and, and affected by these religious things that, that are preventing me from having the kind of freedom, right? Jesus, Paul wrote in his letter to the Galatians, it was for freedom that Christ set us free, right? So don't be entangled again in, in any yoke of bondage. And religion and all that it represents is a huge bondage a huge chain that gets around us and and it's just not good so i hope this is helpful hope it's encouraging for you again you know feel free pick up gary's book i think you'll really enjoy it uh, bit.ly slash distort image all right well thank you appreciate you guys hanging out with me this morning um let's see who else jumped in here after i started gabbing <laughs> oh my goodness look at all of you wow 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 um let's see uh jackie good morning um patty good to see you joanne bernadette uh maria robin lisa <laughs> gosh kali allison candy oh man you guys are just great let me see anybody else that i miss here gloria wow good stuff um yeah, I think I got everybody. I hope I did. If I didn't, please forgive me. <laughs> hey, have an awesome day. Um, thank you to all of you that are sharing this with your friends. It's so great to see new folks jumping in. Um, and again, you know, feel free to reach out if you'd like to talk to me. If you have questions, send me an email. Send me a Facebook message. If some of this stuff doesn't make sense to you, you're, you, you wonder, you know, about it. Um, or again, if you just want to talk about where you're at in your in your life and maybe you know you're looking for some help some clarity on where god's t you know wanting to take you reach out i'd love to hear from you thanks again for hanging out um, look forward to being back tomorrow with a little bit more breakfast with jesus and with you till then have an awesome day go out there and just you know love on somebody let them feel the presence of god flowing flowing out of you all right we'll see you tomorrow